One, give my hand clap for participating. Don't go anywhere. Here we go. All right, turn around. Turn around to the congregation. Did you, did you get an answer? Do you have an answer to, to win the gift cards? No, we don't have an answer. No answer. Do you have an answer? One way, Jesus. How many believe that these guys are right? How many believe that these guys are right with no answer at all? <clears throat> are you ready? Here's the answer. Yeah, I need, nobody's right. Huh? You didn't have an answer? No. No, you don't win. Are you ready? Here's the directions. Put it in alphabetical order. Good. Go. First one wins. Go. Alphabetical order. Go, 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 go. Alphabetical order. The letters. All right. Hurry up. Hope they know the alphabet. You got it? Yay! Come on, give him a hand clap for winning the game. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you win. <laughs> Wasn't that easy? Yeah. When you knew what you needed to do. Isn't it? Oh! See, you were all cocky, weren't you? When you first got there, you were just some cocky little twit who came up here. Listen now. And he, did you see him? I know the answer. I know the answer. What's that? Yeah. I know the answer. How many of you thought you knew the answer? Yeah. Thank you, everybody. You can place them right down there and just head on back to your seat. The reality is, is that there's a way that seems right to man that leads to death. They knew the end result was to win what? The end result was to win the gift cards. But the reality is was they saw, they thought they knew, but they weren't given any directions. And this is the way a lot of Christians' lives are. They know the end result. They don't want to go to hell. They know that end result. But yet, they never position themselves to learn the principles to go all the way. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Come on, let me say that again. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. I know a lot of Christians that They've made up the game. Why do you think there are so many religions and denominations? They sit down and they concoct their own thought process. And, well, I think.
and God does it this way. I have had people tell me that God is a she. I've had people tell me that this and that. I've had every imaginable description of what somebody really perceived in their heart as being right and the way to get to heaven. There are very sincere people that will even tell you, well, I'm a nice person. I, you know, I don't hurt anybody. I'm a nice guy. I do good things for everybody. And in their heart, that's what they honestly believe they have to do to go to heaven. But that's not what the, the Bible says. The Bible says there's no, man, no name under heaven which while you shall be saved, but by the name of Jesus. Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Allah will not get you to heaven. Buddha will not get you to heaven. Shinduism will not get you to heaven. We can go through the list of the world religions. They will not get you to heaven. There's only one way to heaven and that is through Jesus Christ. And as a Christian, it's not just knowing that, but God, I want to go all the way. And to go all the way and be successful, it is not an accident. You have got to know God's word. Matthew chapter 13 talks about the word of God and, and about the parable of the sower and the seed. And the seed that's being planted is called the word of God. And this is how it's describing so many Christians. They come in and they receive the word of God in church. They receive the word of God from their friend. And it goes, and the Bible says it just goes by the wayside. And the devil comes and steals that seed. Why does the devil steal the seed? Because the word is Christ Jesus. Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. The word is what holds the directions to get us from point A to point B. The word is the reality of who we are in him and who he is in us. And without the word of God, then we're all just guessing. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. God hasn't called you to guess. God has called you to know. Or else Christ would not have given us the word. The word didn't come from a church, didn't come from a man. The word came from God himself. And he handed it down to his church and said, come on now, this is how you know me. This is how I think. This is why I do what I do. This is why I think the way I think. This is what I require of you. This is what I will do for you. This is the covenant that I have cut. This is why I'll forgive. Hey, if you ask, if you confess your sins, I'm faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, if you want salvation, if you want healing, if you want deliverance, if you want prosperity in this world, if you want success, if you want God to move in your life, then we cannot do it by accident. The church has to have a revival in the word of God. We've got to have a revival for the passion of God's word. We've got to have a revival so that we don't just guess how to get to the end. But God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And the way we know that is because the word tells us so. That parable of the sow and the seed is the first one falls by the wayside. The second one starts growing root, but it doesn't grow deep enough. And therefore, what happens? It, get, it gets destroyed. The third one, it starts growing root, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke it out. How many people have started their run with God, but have not ended and have abandoned ship before they completed the race? Without the rules, you don't know how to get to the end. And God is not in this just to get you out of hell. Or you'd already be raptured and with him in heaven. You're here and I'm here because we have a divine purpose. How many here are breathing in this room? That is a good sign. If you're breathing, that means God has you here at this very moment of history, at this very period of time, in this very region that you're here for a purpose and for a reason because God needs to eternally use your life to change other people. You are not an accident, and therefore we cannot live by accident. I sat with R.C., what was it, two weeks ago, R.C.? We went to breakfast. 
And what did you call that thing? That little continuous improvement. So we sat down, and he asked me that. Well, I'm a pastor of a church. The continuous improvement is just so.